In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can create tooltips for your buttons or your movie clips. And this is what our movie is going to look like in the end. So I just have four simple component buttons here. And when I roll onto one of the buttons, there's a, a delay before the tooltip pops up, which is very common in operating systems and other applications. So you can see when I roll onto button one, there's a pause, and then the tooltip for button one comes up and it's following the position of my mouse here. When I roll onto button two, you can see again there's another delay. And you can customize the length of that delay or you could not have any delay at all. So let's jump over to Flash and we can start building it. Okay, once you're inside of Flash, you want to create a locked actions layer and then create a new layer called buttons. And what I've done on that layer is I've just dragged out four of these uh, button components that come with Flash. I've dragged them out to the stage like this. And I've just selected it and then changed the label down here in the uh, properties panel. And I've also given them instance names of B1, B2, B3, and B4. Okay, so now we have our button set up. We can lock the buttons layer. And we're going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this tool tip. Okay, now I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to remove the stroke so there's no stroke. And then I'm going to choose the color that I want my tool tip to be. So I'm going to make it this light yellowish color. Okay, now I'm just going to come out to the stage and drag out a rectangle that I want the size that I want my tool tip to be. So something like that will work. Okay, so now I have the rectangle portion. Now I need to make the little um, triangle that comes down at the bottom. So to do that, you come where the rectangle tool is and click and hold, and then choose the polystar tool. And then down in the properties window under options, I'm going to come up here and keep style as polygon, and then put the number of sides to three so that I get a triangle. Okay, now I'm going to come up somewhere underneath that rectangle, but not on top of it. I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag out a little triangle like that. Okay, I'm going to hit the V key to go to the Move tool. And I'm just going to select the triangle that I just made. And now just using the arrow keys, I'm going to nudge it where I want it to be. So something like that. Okay, now since I moved it on top of the rectangle, now when I select this, you can see it's all one shape here. Now I'm going to come over and grab the stroke tool. It's called the ink bottle tool. And I'm just going to select a, a light gray like that. And with this shape still selected, I'm just going to click on it. And you can see now it's put a stroke around it. Okay, so here's the shape of my tooltip, the graphic. So I'm just going to drag a selection around it. Make sure it's all selected. Hit F8. And I'm going to choose movie clip and then I'm going to name it Tooltip. Okay, now I'm going to double click on this to go into edit mode and I'm going to rename that first layer to Tooltip and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this Tip Text. Okay, so now we're going to create a dynamic text box inside of here that's going to hold our Tooltip text. So grab the text tool and I'm just going to drag out the approximate size I want there. Okay, I'm just going to type in some text just so that I can preview what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to say test text. Okay, now obviously the text color is the same as the um, tool tip, which I don't want. So I'm going to change it to black and make sure dynamic text is selected from the properties here. And then you need to give it an instance name. So I'm going to call it tip text. I'm just going to choose Verdana. And uh, as always, if you want to, um, if you want your fonts to be rendered properly in dynamic text fields, you should embed the font. So under specify ranges, I'm going to choose uppercase, lowercase, numerals, and punctuation. And then click OK. Okay, so now I have my text field. 
And again, the other thing you want to do is you want to align it to the center so that your tooltip text is always in the center. So I'm just going to nudge that down so it's in the center of my tooltip. Okay. Now what I want to do is select all of what I have here, both the tooltip and the dynamic text field. Now, if I just drag this away here, these crosshairs here represent the zero, zero position of this movie clip. So when we're going to be moving this tooltip to wherever our mouse is, this will represent where it's going to show up. So you want to move the whole tooltip right about there. Now when my, I have my mouse here, it will show up in this position. If you wanted to do a tooltip that came underneath and you had the triangle going here, you would put it underneath. But for our example, I'm going to put it right about there. And you can create more or less vertical space uh, from, the, from the mouse position if you wanted to. Okay, so that's all I have to do to construct my tooltip. So I'm going to go back to the root timeline. And now we need to give this an instance name. So I'm going to call it tooltip. Okay, so now we're ready to start writing our action script. So I'm going to lock the tooltip layer. Highlight the first keyframe of the actions layer. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do in the action script is since I don't want the tooltip to be visible when we first come into the movie, I'm going to first set its visibility property equal to false. So I'm going to say tooltip dot underscore visible is equal to false. Okay. Now, in order to get a delay, meaning when I roll onto the button, there's going to be a delay, uh, we're going to be using an interval to call uh, a function. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable, which will be our interval ID. And remember some of, from some of the previous tutorials, you need that interval ID in order to clear the interval when we're through with it. So for right now, I'm just going to create this variable, and I'm going to call it tip int for tip interval. Okay, now I'm going to write the on rollover and on rollout code for that first button. And I've called it, the instance name is b1, so it's b1 dot on rollover is equal to function. Okay, now I'm going to set that interval and it's going to start calling uh, a function we're going to write in a moment. So I'm going to say tip int is equal to set interval. Okay, so the first thing that the set interval function expects is the function name uh, that we're going to be calling. And we're going to write that function in a minute and it's called show tip. The next thing we need to send to the set interval is how often we want that function to be called. So I'm going to give it a number 100. And remember this is in milliseconds so it will actually call this function 10 times a second. And the third parameter that you can send is an argument to send to that function. And we're going to be sending a string to it which represents the tooltip text for this button. So I'm just going to put in double quotes button 1. Okay, now I can close that. So that's all I'm doing in the on rollover. It's going to start the set, set interval going, calling the show tip function 10 times a second. And it's going to be sending this string to that function. Okay, now I can close that. Now I want to set the on roll out state. So b1 dot on roll out is equal to function. Okay. Now I'm going to create another function in a minute called hide tip, which is going to remove the tooltip. And so all we need to do is call that function. So we're just going to say hide tip. Okay, so that's all that's going to be happening in the on rollout. We're going to be calling this hide tip function to remove the tooltip. Now let's go ahead and create the code for the other three buttons. So I'm just going to copy and paste the B1 code. Okay, now it's just a matter of changing the numbers. This is B4, B4, and then remember to change the tooltip text to whatever you want it to be for that button. This is button 3. Okay, and 
This is button two. Okay, so we've now set up the on rollover and on rollout states for our buttons. Now we just need to create those functions that we were referencing. Okay, before we create the functions though, I'm first going to create a variable which is going to act like a counter. So it's going to be calling the show tip function 10 times a second when we roll onto a button. I'm going to use a variable that's just going to be counting how many times it's called the function. And then when it's reached that count, then I'm actually going to turn the tool tip on. So this is what will cause a delay. So I'm going to create a variable called count. And I'm just going to set it equal to zero initially. Okay, now let's start writing this show tip function. So I'm going to say function show tip. Now remember, we're sending a string as an argument to this function. So we need a parameter here to catch it. And I'm just going to call this tip text. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we're in this function is we want to check to see if the count has reached the number uh, for our delay. So it's calling this 10 times a second. So I'm going to say if count is equal to 5. Now this number 5 is going to represent the delay uh, you know, for your tooltip. So if you wanted a longer delay, you'd increase this number. If you wanted a shorter delay, you would decrease it. But for now, I'm going to leave it at 5. So if count is equal to 5, now we need to write the code that's going to display our tooltip. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clear this interval because I don't want the interval to continue calling this function if we've reached the uh, appropriate amount of delay. So we're going to say clear interval and then pass to it that interval ID up here which is tip int. Okay, so now we've cleared the interval. Now since we've reached the count that we want it to get to, we want to reset count back to zero ready for the next time uh, that we roll onto a button. So we're going to say count is equal to zero. Okay, now we want to take this tooltip text argument that we sent and actually set that dynamic text field uh, to that text. So the tooltip movie clip has an instance name of tooltip, and inside of that we have a dynamic text field called tip text, and then we want to set its text property equal to this argument which is tip text. So this sets that dynamic text field in the tooltip. Okay, so before we actually turn the visibility of the tooltip to true, we want to move it to the current position of the mouse. Because if you don't do that, you'll notice a little jump uh, because you'll see it become visible and then it will jump to where your mouse is. So we want to do that first before we make it visible. So I'm going to say tooltip dot underscore x is equal to underscore root dot underscore x mouse, which is the current position of the mouse. And I'm just going to copy this and we want to change this to y. Okay. So we've moved the tooltip now to the correct position. So now we want to turn its visibility on. So there's a tooltip dot underscore visible is equal to true. Okay, so now our tooltip is displaying. Okay, now we need to get it to actually follow our mouse because when we mouse onto the button and the tooltip comes on, we want it to move wherever our mouse goes. So to do that, we're going to set the on mouse move event uh, in order to cause it to follow our mouse. So I'm going to say underscore root dot on mouse move is equal to function. Okay, now we're going to do the identical thing that we did here. So every time the mouse is moved, we want to move the tooltip movie clip uh, to the current position of the mouse. Okay, now one of the benefits of using the on mouse move is it's not dependent on the frame rate of the movie. 
So we're only causing this to run when the mouse is moved. So it frees up uh, a lot of processing power that way. And one really good way, a thing to do here is to use update after event, which is a function that basically says, even if we haven't gotten to the next frame yet, we want to update this position or what's happening in this on mouse move. Uh, so you, the movement of the tooltip is very responsive to your mouse movements. Okay, so now we can close the on mouse move event block here. Okay, so now we can close the if statement. Remember, we're saying if count is equal to five, uh, show the, the tooltip and move it to the position of the mouse. Now we want to say else count plus plus. So every time we come through here, count is initially at zero. So every time we come through, we're adding one to count. When it gets to five, then we show the tooltip. But if it's not at five yet, we want to add one to it each time. Okay, so now this else statement is done. And our show tip function is done. Okay, now we need to write the hide tip function, which is pretty simple. Because when we roll out, we want to remove the tooltip. So I'm going to say function hide tip. Okay, so once we're in here, we want to go ahead and clear this interval again, just in case it hasn't been cleared. It's just kind of a safeguard. So I'm going to say clear interval. And the interval ID is tip int. Okay, so once we roll out of the button, we double check and we make sure that that interval has been cleared. Now we want to set the visibility of the tooltip to false. So tooltip dot underscore visible is equal to false. And now we want to delete the on mouse move event that we set up here because we don't want this thing running unnecessarily when the tooltip isn't visible. So we say delete underscore root dot on mouse move. Okay, now we can close this hide tip function. Alright, so let's quickly go through all this action script one more time. So the first thing I do when I come in is I want to set the visibility of the tooltip to false because I only want it to show when we roll onto the buttons. Then I create a variable and this will represent our interval ID um, which we can use to either start or clear uh, an interval. Then we start doing our button on rollover states. So for the, when we roll onto the button, we're setting that interval ID equal to this set interval. And in this interval, we're calling the show tip function 10 times a second. And to it, we're sending this string as an argument, which represents the tooltip that I want for this particular button. Then on the on roll out, which is when I roll off of the button, I'm calling the hide tip function, which removes the um, tooltip. So it sets its visibility to false and uh, it clears the interval and the on mouse move. So now when we go down to the show tip function, first we've created a variable called count, which is going to count how often this function has been called. When it gets to the appropriate amount, we want to uh, display the tooltip, move it to the uh, current position of the mouse, then we turn the visibility to true, and then we set the on mouse move so that anytime the mouse is moved, we set the X and the Y properties of the tooltip equal to the mouse, and that's what gets it, that's how it achieves the effect of following the mouse. And we use update after event in order to refresh the tooltip or refresh the screen. Uh, whenever the mouse is moved, even if it hasn't gotten to the next frame yet. And if it hasn't reached the count, we want to just add one to that count variable. And again, the count, uh, we're here where we say if count is equal to five, increasing this number will increase the delay before your tooltip shows. Decreasing it will decrease the delay. And the hide tip function I've already talked about essentially just clears everything up turns the tooltip off and waits for us to do it all again. Okay, so let's go out and test this and we'll look at the finished product. Okay, here are four buttons. Now when I roll onto that first button, you can see the delay there. And now when I move my mouse, the on mouse move, 
is uh, making the tooltip follow my mouse. And when I roll off, it clears everything and waits for the next time that I roll onto the button. So this is a basic introduction to creating tooltips, and they can be a very uh, helpful thing to have on any type of Flash application, uh, just to help the user uh, to know what's going on with your buttons or your movie clips. So I hope you found this one helpful.